Okay, so Peter and I are at this steam boiler that I showed in a video uh, last week. It's a steam boiler used for hydronic heating. It's got the sight glass right there, as well as the pumps for the hydronic zone. But we're cutting this boiler out today and we're putting in a Juan McLean CGA. Here's a closer look at it. See the sight glass, the low water cutoff, the auto feed, and then we have an expansion tank, circulators, pressure reducing valve. Uh, we're gonna replace this uh, pressure relief valve as well on the water heater. And hopefully should be fairly straightforward. We have one radiant zone and one hydronic zone, and we're just draining down now that we move this out of the way and get the new one in place. We'll get rid of this one later. Take a look inside that flue. We got a nice new stainless steel chimney liner, so we'll have no issues with draft here. Uh, I did have to pull this off last time I was here. This was sitting on top of the water heater, uh, going from three to four, but it needs to just be four. So now it'll fix that issue that they had with venting. And you can see here, we just move the boiler over for now. Um, it's just me and Peter here at the moment, and we're gonna get the new one in because it's much smaller. We'll line it up with the exhaust here, and then we're gonna try to see what we can reuse out of this for the radiant, because um, it's all fairly brand new. They're doing a bunch of renovations in this house. Uh, it's pretty much gutted, but I'm gonna try to get the boiler right center with this uh, exhaust piping and everything should be simple enough. We have our return line right here, which splits off. And then we have our supply line right here, which thankfully I was able to spin this out because you got a lot of corrosion here. Didn't want to risk reusing that. Uh, Peter was able to loosen that, I wasn't. And it's turned up right now just because there's some water in the line, but so that'll be really nice. We'll get a new press coupling in there, or maybe even a black 90 or whatever we need to do to get to where we need to be. And here's the boiler. We got all the other supplies in the van, but you can see how much smaller of a footprint it's gonna be. And we'll probably get the hand truck out and we'll hand truck it in. But it's a Wall McLean CGA 4 Series 3. You can see, uh, let's see, without showing the address, how tiny this house is, so. This will be perfect. Actually, it's a little bit big, but much better than what they had before. And we were able to get this in pretty quickly, so we didn't have to wait too long. And there we are, centered with our exhaust and so much smaller of a footprint. It's pretty crazy. So should be able to get everything piped in nicely. Our supply comes up here. We got our half inch tapping for our air separator as well. You can see that probe, that temperature probe literally sits right on our supply. So it's cool to see that, but this should go nice and smoothly. Half inch tapping, our heat exchanger. You can see this one, how filthy it is in there. Let's see if I get my light in. So, cause it's not terrible, but this will be nice. Okay, so Peter's getting our riser set up. It's gonna come out of the top of the boiler and hold the trotic heater gauge. It's gonna go right there. I am working on the exhaust, which looks like it's gonna be a perfect fit uh, with our vent damper and our reducer. And I just wanted to record this. All vent dampers come with, all modern vent dampers, come with these two pieces. You can see that one has a hole in it. This one doesn't. This is a direct spark ignition, so it doesn't have a pilot 24-7. So you use this plug that completely blocks off this hole in there. But if you had a pilot, then you would put the one with the hole in it. That way the pilot can exhaust out from the venting. Okay, so here's where we're at. We got our expansion tank, our pressure reducing valve with gauge on with our isolator for our expansion tank which just cleared the triticator gauge. And right now we're working on putting our circulators in right here on our supply side. 
This will be for our radiant with the mixing valve, and this will be for our main zone. So, so far, so good. Okay, so our circulators are on. We are working on now bringing up our return to pick up this line, as well as mix with uh, the cold coming into the mixing valve. So we gotta tie it in with a T there and a T here. Put this piece right here. Okay, so here is what we have on that. Our main return line comes down and our boiler return comes in, or our radiant return comes in, and it goes into there as well. But it also goes into here so that the boiler can, the pump can pull some water from the return, some water from the boiler so that it's not overheating the floor of the radiant zone. And we're just working on our connection up here. These circulators, leave them at an angle so you can access the screws and the wiring. And I still gotta put that piece on the exhaust, get his own relay put in, and gas as well. Okay, I'm currently working on electric. I gotta bring power into the boiler, as well as power over to uh, the zone switching relay, which I gotta figure out where I'm going to be putting that. But the homeowner just stopped by and he couldn't believe the difference. Uh, he's so impressed with how how much better this system looks than what he had before. Um, just a little bit of a rundown. This is a custom made, or a, a pre-built manifold that you could just order online and it's uh, inch and a quarter by one inch. And then their mixing valve goes right into that one inch, shoots off three quarter into the return and three quarter black with a bushing for the supply. Same with this, we come off one inch, go to three quarter for our supply, and then we come back in on there. Um, half inch boiler water feed. It's already pressurized, so we know these connections aren't leaking. I could pressurize the boiler, but I'm waiting on that. Um, for our zone switching relay, still not sure where I wanna put it. I think it'd be nice to have it up on the wall but maybe I'll just stick with putting it on the boiler itself. I think it'll be a good spot about right here. And it's still, if I put it here, you'll still be able to access everything and the cover will still come off no problem. So I think that's, I'm gonna do something like that. Um, just to kind of keep everything compact. I always make, the electrical is my worst. That's always the sloppiest. So I want to try to make it look really good on this one. Okay, so electric is done connection wise. We just have to neaten it all up and it's, it's gonna look good. This electric's gonna look good. Um, but we should be all ready now to pressurize the boiler. So actually we're not ready because this is open and this is closed. Oh, that's tight. But now we can open up our pressure reducing valve. And our zones are closed right here, our two return lines. But you can hear the air coming out there. Now wait on that. Air is coming out of the main air vent as well as the air vent on top of the boiler. And, oh, here we go. Then we can work on purging and then bleeding the radiator since it is a mono, mono flow system. Uh, water heater is back up and running. We replaced the relief valve as well as flushed the tank out for him. And our venting's all screwed in. Nice little bit of pitch. So we're going to get to bleeding and then turn everything on, make sure that everything runs okay. Okay, so we just bled the radiators out and neatened up some of the wiring. Still got a couple more wires to neaten up, but our VX, that's going to be pulled together tighter. Has a drip loop in case it ever gets wet. Uh, we just let 
We have the digital controller. You can see 53 degree water temperature. This house is ice cold. The zone relay panel. The air vent on top of the boiler. Charticator gauge. Expansion tank. And then this is our purge for our radiant zone. So if you open this with this closed, um, it'll pull through this line to clear it. And then our purge for our monoflow zone is two separate right there for two separate returns. And it all comes back in one inch towards the inch and a quarter tapping on the boiler with the boiler drain. 30 PSI relief valve. Vent damper, spill switch, Kalefi pressure reducing valve with a check valve right there. Uh, the spiral vent air separator, our half inch gas cock and drip leg is three quarter because the pipe came down in three quarter. Had to make a modification on this, which is missing a drip leg uh, because the gas leg wasn't the gas line wasn't lining up. Then we have our new relief valve here. Our Water heater is at temperature. Do you want to run the hot water, Peter? And we still got to get this boiler out, which is not going to be fun because it's a pretty good amount bigger than that one. Okay, so here's the boiler. It's been running for some time now. Um, this is the radiant zone heating up the floor. I have the FLIR heat uh, charging so that I can check if the floor is getting um, Hot, actually, you know what? I'll check that right now. This is cool. You'll, you'll actually be able to see the pipes inside of the floor. There. You can see all the hot, hot water pipes in there. It's done pretty sloppy, but yeah, so the floor is heating up. Nice. Uh, it looks like... No, nothing under the... Bathtub. Nothing under the bathtub. Over here, no, I don't think. And no, nothing under the... Only here. So just under the tile. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, I'll take a look at the radiators as well. 114, 18, 12, 20, whatever. We're getting hot. Um, it hasn't been running for that long yet, and the water was so cold that it's gonna take some time to, for everything to come up to temperature. We got 136 on our boiler. So, came out nice. Got a tag, new install, accidentally wrote. 23 instead of 24 for the year. Combustion analysis test, making sure it's burning and drafting safely. I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. Here's the boiler. Me and Peter brought it upstairs and we called some people. They're going to take it away for us. How easy it is to get in and out. Somebody got hit into somebody who got into somebody. So that means that two people weren't paying attention. And probably all three weren't paying attention, just like what I'm doing right now. Okay, so we finished up there. I'm heading home now. Peter's heading home. It is 3.30. Uh, we started at around like 8.15, 8.30, because we were waiting on the homeowner. But we took our time. 
it's a little bit different than the boilers that I'm used to installing because I that that is the first cast iron boiler that I have installed that's not steam without Mike there with just me and Peter and it went really well the customer is so so happy with how it turned out he didn't expect it at all when I went there last week I was just there for a leaking boiler and I told him and yeah, we can fix the leak uh, but we can't guarantee anything on this equipment uh, it's installed improperly it's going to be a headache down the line um, you're better off you're going to save more money in the long run just replacing it and we talked for a while and he said that he trusts me and he was going to go for it so we did have to work a lot with him on the actual pricing which is why you may notice it's a little bit different than most of our installs as far as the materials we use uh, we just kind of worked with things that we already had at the shop that way we wouldn't have to buy a bunch of all new things for him because uh, he is tight on funds being that he just bought the house and a lot of work has to be done to it but he could not believe it like he, he, he literally walked in there and his jaw dropped and he just stood there and just kept saying I can't believe it so it's nice when customers appreciate it rather than say oh, how come I'm being charged this much but uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching uh, comment any advice or criticisms or feedback and this person doesn't know how to drive and subscribe thanks for watching okay so gas steam boiler no manufacture date being used for hydronic uh, expansion tank is full Pressure relief valve is leaking water. Yeah, the heat is coming up. It's coming on up. So the heat works. It's just a matter of that leak. So you think? Yeah. You think I should have bought this house with this? What's your suggestion? Listen, a, a house is a house. They're and they're, know, they're expensive regardless. I know, honestly, before we close it, I was having a problem. Like, because normally when we go to all the houses that I've looked at, it's not as yeah messy. It looks messy. Yeah, you know. But then you know, uh, so I do I do heating for a living. Right. If I walked into a house and I saw this, I would just ask for money off because I could put in a new boiler myself. Right, right, right. right, right. But you know, as a homeowner, I. I couldn't tell you whether or not you should have bought the house. I mean, I, you can all, I don't want you can replace the boiler. The boiler is a replaceable right, thing, right. and when you replace the boiler, you add value to the house. Of course, of course. And it's a non-taxable job yeah. too. Yeah. Yes. Yes, one second. Sure. Hello. So, not sure yes. how. I guess this is how we're controlling temperature. Set for 120 degrees. It's too far from the, the yes. flame to control yes. it by. Um, <coughs> and I can't see. Yeah, there is no flame right now. We have solder holding in our thermal couple together. Hmm. <coughs> Fried steam controls with some wiring still going to and from it's a very very odd yes. setup we got our sight glass you know the thing is um, I just don't want to leak 